Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Venus and the potential for this beautiful planet to actually hold quite a lot of water on the inside. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. In a video a few months ago I talked about a very interesting mineral that's pretty much all over the inside of our planet, right below the crust, known as ringed woodite. Ringed woodite is a very interesting blue mineral that seems to contain double the amount of water on the surface of the planet. In other words, our planet Earth has quite a lot of ringed woodite uh, on the inside at a depth of about 500 to 800 kilometers, and this seems to contain quite a lot of water. We've also discovered that this is probably where most of the water on Earth came from, not asteroids, not comets, but the minerals on the inside. And we also hypothesized that Mars may have had the same uh, kind of a structure, but as Mars cooled down and as basically the temperature on the inside the planet decreased, uh, the water from Ringwood I started escaping and eventually uh, created created lots and lots of water on the surface here that eventually uh, escaped due to low gravity and due to the fact that Mars didn't really have that much atmosphere and uh, eventually made this planet a lot drier than, um, than it used to be. But we've never really talked about Venus that much. And because we assume that Mars, Earth and Venus were created from relatively similar materials, and of course Mercury as well, um, the assumption goes that Venus also has quite a lot of ringwoodite on the inside. And because uh, it actually didn't cool down but it warmed up, um, unlike Earth and unlike Mars, it's very likely that the ringwoodite is actually still inside and it's very likely that we have quite a lot of water right here on Venus as well. In other words, if we could somehow find a way to decrease the temperature of Venus, to basically more manageable temperatures from what it is right now. And one of the first things we could do is, of course, decrease its atmosphere quite dramatically. Uh, we could maybe find a way to naturally release all of the water inside Venus without really bringing any water from the outside. So if we can decrease the atmosphere, let's actually go to about 0.7 uh, atmospheres and also make sure that Venus actually uh, naturally reduces its temperature to kind of be more similar to Earth, we could potentially have it uh, start releasing that ringwoodite water that's stored on the inside and thus create the uh, actual oceans on the surface completely without any asteroids or comets. Now this would take uh, quite a lot of time actually because uh, this so-called water cycle is uh, very 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 time consuming. As a matter of fact it probably takes up to a billion years on earth to circulate water from the surface down to uh, upper ma mantle and then back to the surface. But there is probably a way for us to accelerate and one of those ways is of course to have Venus cool down really really quick. Right now it's actually getting a little bit chilly here to the point where it's not going to have liquid water so let's decrease the albedo a little bit and give it just a little bit of water so that we can have something on the surface here and i can already see a water layer developing right there so if we remove the atmosphere we'll see that there is now liquid water on the surface and all this water came from the inside because as the planet cools down the uh, layer of ring woodite will actually move closer and closer to the surface and will eventually start coming out and deposit these huge layers of uh, liquid water. Now all of this is obviously still a speculation. We're kind of basing this assumption on um, what we've seen on Earth so far and what we've actually discovered in the last few years about our own structure, the structure of our planet Earth. But if Venus is structured similarly, it definitely has this hidden water on the inside. And to release this water, we need to cool Venus down. 
Now, if this is true, Venus actually has a much higher chance of being a habitable planet than Mars does. Obviously, there's a lot of problems to resolve here, but if cooling down Venus is all we need to do, it would be a lot easier for us to basically terraform this planet rather than going to Mars and trying to find a way to not only warm this up, but also maintain the atmosphere and maintain the liquid water, uh, despite the fact that Mars is farther away from the Sun, but also the fact that Mars just doesn't have enough gravity to hold on to stuff. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. We've just created three relatively habitable planets, simply based on the fact that we were able to release liquid water stored inside of those planets. Now, Mars may not have any left, but we definitely know that Earth does, and so does probably Venus. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you know a little bit more about Venus and the water that's hiding inside the planet. Hopefully one day we'll find a way to actually terraform Venus and possibly call it Earth 2.0. Anyway, thank you for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.